All right, hello guys. This is an update video to my last video. Uh, of course, the lawnmower is coming out right when you start. Hold tight. All right, so back to where we were. I had my oil cooler line separate at the pinch fitting. It was a faulty line. I guess it seems to be a big problem. I, I had, uh, I put up a video earlier in regards to everybody else having the same issue, uh, but it dumped out all the oil and the motor locked up on me. I couldn't get it to turn over with the starter. What I ended up doing is coming under here. Of course, there's oil everywhere now. Uh, and I removed this. Uh, I actually didn't remove it. I just uh, un disconnected the uh, uh, torque converter pan or the uh, flywheel pan uh, protector, whatever you call it, plate. Just three bolts here. One sec. All right, that was kind of funny. That was uh, the guy I was just complaining about mowing the lawn next door. I guess he's seen my uh, YouTube videos and he said I've helped him out a bunch. Larry, he takes care of the buildings here or the maintenance. And uh, he just introduced himself and uh, we had a little conversation. He said, uh, having a little problem with his walker, you might drop it off here. Give a shout out to Larry if he happens to see this video apparently he's subscribed to the channel all right so i ended up putting some mystery oil into the cylinders took all the spark plugs out after the motor was seized and i loosened this cover enough and took the starter off to get a pry bar in here to be able to grab the teeth of the flywheel and i was actually able to free up the motor and get it to spin a little bit once i got a full revolution out of it I connected the starter back, hooked up a jump box, and I got it to turn over, and I turned it over for a couple of minutes till I built up oil pressure again uh, to make sure that all the oil lines were all full again. And I started it up, you know, obviously put the spark plugs back in and everything. I started it up, and it ran great. Uh, everything was fine. I didn't have any knocking noises or anything. Uh, so I was quite surprised. I'm like, well, let's go with it. I started driving it to my first job after connecting the trailer up and after like three or four miles, I started to hear a little bit of a knocking and I was getting kind of a misfire it seemed. So I disconnected my trailer, I stuck it uh, aside to come back and get it with another truck and drove the truck back to the shop. It turns out that what was happening is I had a little extra play in my crankshaft. The crank sensor right here, there's a magnet that connects or is not supposed to connect it stays a little bit away from a sensor inside a wheel on the crank uh, that sends information to your computer to tell you where the position of the crank obviously crank position sensor well it was happening because the crank now wore the bearings a little bit and i was getting that little bit of knocking noise which is the crank bearings unfortunately i pulled the crank sensor out and i actually was able to put a shim in it because when you buy a new sensor it comes with shims and I shimmed it a little bit away because it was making contact with the crank sensor and that's what was causing the misfire. That got the truck running good, but I now had that continual knock. This truck, I'm trying to get through as little as possible. This is trusty rusty. I did a Rust-Oleum spray can. Um, because of the fact that it has a rusty frame, I can't really sell it for anything. It doesn't really have much of a value. It's all set up for a plow, so it's a great plow truck. This had a hole in the oil pan from rust that I JB welded at the beginning of the season. This is where it was leaking from and we have JB welded it and it has held and is not leaking but I knew that it was a temporary situation. I wanted to change out the oil pan at some point. What better time than when I go in to inspect the main and rod bearings. Hopefully the crank's not wasted. I'm sure there might be a little minor damage to the crank but putting a fresh set of bearings in We'll give this, you know, hopefully another 50,000 miles or so before it wears down and starts knocking again, which for this truck would be enough years until it's in the junkyard. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a small investment. We're talking, you know, maybe $100, $150 worth of parts in a little bit of time. Uh, so what I have done at this point is removed the front axle, uh, which was pretty simple to do. There's a couple of bolts on that flange right there. We've got a bolt that goes through here and then another bolt on another bolt. Disconnect the drive shaft, one plug, and unbolt the two axles. I left the axles in. They're sitting right here. I left the drive shaft in. It's sitting right there. Here's the other one. And uh, 
there was this one bolt right here, one bolt right here, and the two bolts right here, and I was able to drop that down. And it's now on the ground. So now I have a nice wide open shot at our oil pan. All right, I wanted to bring attention to this unit here. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that don't realize this, but the oil cooler lines that were the initial problem that blew my motor can be eliminated. Uh, it's kind of an add-on. A lot of these 5.7 engines don't have an oil cooler, an external oil cooler. The oil filter would just connect right to the engine block. It wouldn't connect to this unit here. This little deal here is what intercepts the oil through the line, out through the little radiator, and then back, or the oil cooler and back, which is basically a radiator. And this connects up to the engine via these two bolts. Now there is a plate that you can buy that is basically just a little round circle like this with the same bolt pattern, uh, which is basically what is put in any of these 5.7 liter or small block Chevys that don't have an external oil cooler. And the plate goes inside here, and there's a bolt that goes through here and here, and now that gives you a place to mount a bigger oil filter, and it screws right into the new pipe that you put in right here, basically eliminating this whole oil cooler ordeal, which is exactly what I'm going to do, because for the amount of help that it cools down your oil, it's not worth the risk of these oil lines, especially since even new ones can just blow open at any given time and ruin your motor. All right, pull the oil pan down. You can see the metal flakes glistening in the oil pan. Look up in those corner. You can see right there. Nice chunk of bearing right there. Look at that sticking out of, oh, is that a piston ring? No, that's a piece of a bearing. Now we're seeing this together for the first time. There's a piece of one of the bearings or the bearing that failed. I'm hoping there's only one bearing that's bad, but who knows? Sucked right up into the oil pickup. Let's see another one in there. Oh yeah, all kinds of pieces up in there. So we're gonna make sure to clean that out. All right, I got to the goods. I pulled the back cap off and the oil pump. I kind of stick that out of the way. Show you the back cap bearing. Doesn't look bad at all. Got a little bit of scuffing on it. All right, so here's our final results. And I have a theory on exactly how everything went down. Of course, I ran out of oil because that line burst. Like I said, I shut it off pretty quickly, uh, but the motor was seized after that. What that did, when it ran out of oil, these main bearings seized up to the crankshaft. They got hot and melted, and that's what seized the motor, so I couldn't turn it. I went and physically forced to turn the motor after the fact, once it's cooled down and I put new oil in it and everything. And at that time, because the bearings were basically adhered to the crankshaft, I spun the bearings a little bit. And what happens when you spin the bearings is there's a little oil hole that's in the top. This is the top bearing. Each one has a hole in the top and that's where the oil comes in. And then it follows around that channel and that lubricates the bottom. Well, as soon as you spin that bearing a little bit in the journal, that, that hole no longer lines up. So then uh, when I started it, it ran and it was okay for a short time. But like I said, after I drove it a couple of miles, I started noticing a knocking sound and that was the, it was a very light knocking sound. That's why I didn't run it too much because I knew that I might be doing this. And that's when it was just uh, eating away at these bearings because they weren't getting any lubrication because the oil hole in this one, you can see it clogged right up solid from the bearing material and uh, wiped out these bearings. And that's the noise. Uh, so I did 
go ahead and pull a crankshaft rod off of each journal and all the uh, rod bearings are in good shape. I see no weird wear. I see no uh, scratches, no nothing. Um, so that I'm confident that the noise I was hearing were the main bearings, not the rod bearings. I am not going to replace those. Uh, they look fine to me. There's really no reason to replace them. I think at this point it would be kind of crazy. Um, I probably have more of a chance of an issue replacing them than leaving them as is uh, worn in and mated to the way they should be. So uh, the crankshaft actually where the main bearings all ride is actually fairly decent. This one has a little bit small bit of damage i'm going to take a little piece of emery cloth and clean this up uh, this will smooth out because this is basically the aluminum bearing that's connected to the main main bearing here and i'm going to put some new bearings just regular oe size which i'm going to verify that this was an original bearing and it hasn't been rebuilt there'll be some markings you can see the heat where this one really heated up there'll be some markings on the edge that will indicate that it's not an oversized bearing. I can see some markings there. One of these ones I'll be able to get some numbers off of. There's some numbers right there. You can see the bearing where it started to melt right off the side. That was the pieces that we saw down in the oil pan right there. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it back together. I'm gonna eliminate that oil line so this never happens again and we're going to run it and see how much longer i get out of it i'll be willing to bet i get another good fifty thousand miles out of this motor before it becomes an issue like i said the motor only had one hundred and twenty thousand on a 350 small block chevy that's nothing uh this did do some damage no doubt and uh, it did limit its life somewhat um, but as long as no other bits, which I don't think they did. That screen caught it in the oil pan. I'm going to clean up that oil pump really good, clean the oil pan up, put a new set of main bearings in, some fresh oil, and uh, we'll get it fired up and running again, and I'll uh, let you know how I make out with that. But yeah, that's where we're at on this. Fun, fun, fun. One more thing I want to show you guys how you can determine whether this has been rebuilt or its original bearings. You can see right there it says GM, and then it's got a date code of 1199. This is a 2000 model truck. So this is a very late 99 into 2000 is when it was made, and that's going to be a stock size bearing. There's no, it would be marked if it was an oversized bearing. So this is the original motor and has not been rebuilt before. So... If I was to put oversized bearings in this, that would be a problem. That's why you got to make sure that you put the right size back in. All right, next day here. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that I wasn't going to change the rod bearings. Uh, I decided that I am. Basically, any kit that I saw for sale pretty much comes with the rod bearings. It's almost the same money to get, the, to get just the main bearings. So it comes in a kit. I figure, why not? I am going to go ahead and change them. I started thinking um, one of the main reasons I want to do that is I wanted to clear the passenger, passengers out in the crank. You know, you've got these holes that feed oil from the main to the rod. And I want to spray and clean all those out to make sure there's no metal particulates in there. And which means I had to disconnect all the rod bearings anyways to be able to open the hole up to allow to clean it out, clean up the bearings, re-oil them and all that. So <clears throat> basically I'm taking them out anyways. It'd be silly not to change them. So I am going to change those. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the stock size back in. I am going to get some, uh, I can never on camera remember the name of the stuff, but, you know, the little pla oh, plastic gauge, that's what it is. A uh, little plastic gauge. I'm going to check the clearances just to make sure that the stock size is going to be okay, that I'm within spec. Also going to do the same thing with the main bearings. Uh, this is the final carnage of uh, what we were dealing with. I took all the bearings out. I'll give you a good look here. The uh, thrust main one isn't bad. The front one wasn't too bad, but the middle ones, as you can see, were pretty much wasted. Really bad. Uh, all these pieces of metal were all up inside the strainer. That prevented all of this from getting inside and doing more damage to the motor, thankfully. Uh, so I pulled all that out. I cleaned the strainer all out really good. 
flushed it all out, opened up the oil pump. I did a good inspection in here. I checked the clearances. Everything's nice and tight within spec. Uh, we've done no damage to the oil pump. Cheap enough to replace if I needed to. I would have replaced it if I was in doubt. Um, I still even had good oil pressure when I shut the uh, truck off. Like I said, it just had a slight knock to it. I wanted to uh, take it apart before it got any worse. So I think we're going to be all right with this. Uh, the whole thing, I ended up buying a rod and main bearing set. I ordered the uh, cup adapter to just go with a regular oil filter and eliminate the uh, external oil cooler. Uh, and that comes with a gasket and a couple of bolts. I ordered a new oil pan and oil pan gasket. And I think that's it. Other than that, I'm just gonna need some assembly lube. We're gonna go ahead and I went ahead and cleaned up all the journals, all the mains where the bearings were bad. I didn't touch the uh, rod journals cause they appeared to be in good shape. So I gave those a uh, cleaning with uh, 1000 let me show you what I used. I cut strips right here of this 1000 grit. And then I just take it and go back and forth, kind of polish those. I think we're gonna be fine with that. Uh, this isn't a race motor. This isn't gonna be seeing any high RPMs or anything crazy power. We literally just need a fairly reliable work truck. That's all this thing is. Uh, it's gonna do some snow plowing and it's gonna do some lawn mowing throughout the year. And uh, this is my last attempt at doing any main repairs on this truck. Uh, put it this way, if the transmission goes after I do this, the truck's probably going to be uh, ripped apart for its parts. And there ain't much left of it, honestly. So, But as it is now, uh, the whole thing cost me about $200 in parts. I think it was like $210 with all the parts that I had just mentioned. So uh, those will be in, I believe, Thursday or Friday. It's Tuesday or Wednesday today. I think it's Tuesday. So we got a couple days. Uh, got it pretty much all set right now. I just got to grab some assembly lube when I get the parts in. We're going to go ahead and put it back together, and I'll uh, do a video on the first, uh, the first start. And uh, that way, if it fails and starts knocking again, you can be there to witness it with me, and uh, life goes on. You know, I know the right way to do stuff. I know the wrong way to do stuff. This is somewhere in between. And uh, I'm not going to go dump a ton of money and do anything crazy in this truck. Like I said, I was borderline just going to go to the dealership and buy a new truck at this point. I said, you know what? I'm not going to do it. This make for some good video content. And uh, let's see just what we can get away with. How much we can hurt a motor and put it back together and still make it run good. I've had great luck with my couple of envoys. This uh, white Envoy right there. That's the second Envoy that I got that had the uh, DOD issue where I freed up the lifter and uh, disabled the displacement on demand. They've both been running perfectly. I've had no issues with them. I picked those things up for about 1500 bucks a piece. And uh, great, great vehicles. So, All right, that's it for this video. Uh, have a good one.